We have cells and cells, over hundred billion cells they say. All these cells are essentially coded and, you know, geared for health, for survival mainly. Their own individual survival and the survival of the organism. A few of them take shortcuts, they want to survive upon others. It's crime, you know. So there is a pickpocket. What is his business? What you took one month to earn, he wants to pick it up in one day. But he's also part of the society till he's caught, all right <laughs> Now if all the pickpockets of the country got together and they came to Delhi, now everybody's pockets will be gone because now it's organized. So right now what you ca call as cancer is just this, in everybody's body there are cancerous cells. When they get organized and get focused in one place, then it becomes a serious problem to a point where it can take one's life. What is the solution? There are many things to say. First of all, crime flourishes where there is no order in the system, yes? Criminals in the society will flourish if the law enforcement is not in order. So there is a defense mechanism in our system. Are we keeping it well? Are we bombarding it with all kinds of stimulants, intoxicants, everything, and then we're expecting our defense mechanism to work? It won't work like that. We must understand every stimulant and every intoxicant we consume in some way dents our defense mechanism. People think defense mechanism is only for external infections. No. Even to contain the internal criminals in the body, the defense mechanism works. So a simple thing is, you know, in the yogic system, this is a simple logic. These cancerous cells in our body, they consume usually about twenty-seven to twenty-eight times of food than the normal cells. So, if you space out your meal, an ideal spacing between one meal and the next in the yogic culture is eight to twelve hours. If you space out eight hours meals, you will see the cancerous cells will all die by themselves because they cannot survive without food. Other cells will survive. So always we fixed it, morning one meal, evening one meal, no in between eating. And once in a way, every month, twice a month or once a month, people are practicing one full day, no food. These are simple ways to control this. Apart from that, there are various other things. Above all, if your mind and body is in a certain ease, these will not survive. If your mind and body is in a certain sense of strife, then these will survive and not only survive, they will flourish. If the society is in strife, organized crimes rise. rise. If the society is in order, very little crime happens. The same is true with our physiological structure. So coming to the doctor's statement, it all depends on how you take it. Yes, it all depends on how you take it. Should I fight it? How can you fight an enemy that you cannot see? And cancer is not somebody, you are the cancer. A part of you has turned against yourself. You can't fight it, so what should I do? It is just that every human being, largely every human being, always in some way is working against himself or herself. If you created a moment of anger, you are working against yourself, isn't it? Today there is medical proof to show you. When you are angry, your whole chemistry is working against yourself. This is substantial medical proof. It doesn't need medical proof, one should know by experience. But if you are so insensitive, today we will show you blood results. 
So if you're miserable, you're working against yourself. So in some way, everybody has some kind of cancer. Only when it manifests physiologically, it becomes a medical issue. Till then it's your problem. Yes? Till then it's just your problem. When it physiologically manifests, it becomes a medical issue. Now that it's physiologically manif manifested, for variety of reasons, not for one particular reason, the variety of reasons. Fighting is not the way. Fighting the cancer, not the way. Fighting for something and fighting against something are two different things, isn't it? And anyway, it's best to take the fight out of it. If you want A, f a plant to grow and blossom into beautiful fragrant flowers. You may think you're fighting the earth and getting flowers out of it or you may see it as a great love affair that your involvement with the earth gives out such beauty and fragrance for you. The second is a more intelligent way of doing it because your experience of doing it will be pleasant, the result, whatever it comes, will be pleasant. It may flower or the cow may eat it up. You don't know. But whichever way, if your experience of what you're doing is very pleasant, the result will become irrelevant to you. So does it not matter whether I live or die? It matters. That is why you must do it the way it works. If it matters, it's very important that you do it the way it works. Just because you're a brave man, you, you will fight and you'll die, that's no use. That's of no use to anybody and that's not of no consequence to your life. You did the right things. Maybe you had it your way or maybe you did not have it your way but at least you did the right things, that is most important. So, when death stares at you, it's the greatest possibility, I think already we've handled that, because it's reminding you that you're mortal, which is not a simple thing. Most people have forgotten that they're mortal. They think it only happens to somebody else, yes or no? Most people think death happens only to somebody else, not to them. No, no, it's going to happen to you and me. How it happens is different, but it's going to happen to you and me. It's about how to deal with the cancer. I don't want to go into that now. If you come, we can help you, but first go through the allopathic treatment. It's the most aggressive and invasive treatment, but it's best to go through that rather than taking chances. But after that has happened, recovering from the treatment is our big challenge. There, there are many, many things that can do in the yogic system, it can be done. For cancer itself, it can be done. But the risk levels are so high and the time allowed is so little, so we wouldn't usually take a chance with that. It's best to go through the treatment and then do other things so that recurrence doesn't happen. A very dear friend of mine is um, completely consumed with cancer and she is very, very, very ill. Is there anything that I can do or she can do to come through this? Come through means get I mean, cured? Yes. Get, or die peacefully? Get better. Get better. Hmm? Get better. Get okay. well. No, I am not talking with any disregard to your friend. But I want you to understand, people need to die. When and how is the only question, isn't it? So if death comes to us, yes, we will do everything possible to save ourselves. But if it goes beyond that, let us learn to die gracefully. Let's not fight with it and fight with it like endlessly, you know. It's a horrible way to die. The way people are dying in Western countries is really a horrible way to die. 
even though they're eighty-five, ninety, staying in a hospital with full of pipes and needles all over them, this is not. It's okay if you die two years early, what's the problem? You die peacefully and gracefully, that's more important, isn't it? See, death is the last thing that you do in your life, shouldn't you do it gracefully? We must learn to accept death as a part of our life. We are not wishing death, but when it comes, let us learn to go through it gracefully, you know. If there is a possibility of saving ourselves, living beyond that, that is fine. But what I see in all the geriatrics homes in United States, many people are living beyond their death just because of medical support. And it's such a torture to themselves and to everybody. You should see the way in some of the homes they're being treated. Not because of anything, the people who work there after some time, they get irritated because these dead bodies walking around. They don't understand anything, they've forgotten everything, they're like lost all their senses because they've lived beyond their time. If there was no too much medical input, they would have gracefully died at a certain point, isn't it? There is no sense in stretching it one more month, one more month, one more month, it doesn't make any sense. But life is not understood that way, we are thinking of always stretching it. So if somebody's body is broken beyond redemption, let's learn to die gracefully. Let us make the person understand, it's okay, it's all right, you know. We are all in the queue, aren't we? So you are ahead of me, isn't that great? In any queue you want to be ahead of everybody, isn't it? <laughs> so I'm not trying to make fun of somebody's illness, but we should understand where one thing stops and the other thing begins, isn't it? Yashascharuchitram dhanam merutulyam Gururam dhripadme manaschenalagnam Tatakim, 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 tatakim